I encourage you, if you do have questions, to get up and go over to the phones and call us. And what we'll do is we'll write up your question. We'll keep it totally anonymous. And what we'll do is we'll share your question with the doctors and give them an opportunity to respond. And again, toll free anywhere in the state of Missouri, 1-800-334-3276. In the St. Louis area, 436-2424. And on my new, in the Jefferson City area, 896-5105. And toll free anywhere in the state of Illinois, 1-800-242-3276. So toll free anywhere in the state of Illinois, 1-800-242-3276. And toll free in Missouri, 1-800-334-3276 if you have questions for the doctors. We're going to go to a special song, and during this song, we give you an opportunity to get up, go to those phones, and call in with those questions. Now's your opportunity. people over here on the phones that are here to help you and you feel free to call if you have a question that you would like for us to ask the doctors in Denver we've been telling people that if they are, would like to call in you'd be happy to also pray with them wouldn't you? Right that's right I believe prayer is a real answer to all the problems. You have seen some real answers I to prayer. I have seen a lot of answers to prayer and Jesus is the answer. Amen. And as people are calling right now, we have many people that are calling, many people that do need help throughout the area. We do want to do what we can to help them through the power of God, don't we? Amen. And we want to pray with them. All right. Yes. And we want to encourage you to feel free to call right now. To feel free to call because these people here, they will, they'll write up the questions, we'll go over, we'll ask the doctors, and they also be happy to pray with you, be happy to share with you. And maybe there's other problems that you might have that may not be directly related to the one that we're discussing. We will be talking with you about where you can find direct help. Many times we have people that call in that they may not have a home or there might be another need that they have. So we encourage you to feel free to call about that. And in this area, you have with you some little books and you come yes. down and you get little Gospels of John's from us. You try to really share with people. Yes. That's in the last you. year, Larry, I have handed out personally over 120,000 of these little uh, Gospel mm -hmm. books. Uh -huh. this, these are just scripture, uh, scriptures on prayer, answers to all of our problems, salvation and comfort. So and it's really been amazing. This is not a track. It's just the gospel. It's the word of God. And the word doesn't return void. Sometimes my word does, but God's word never returns void. You come down now and you've been picking up some of the gospels of John. I, that have yes, been I handed a lot of the gospel of John's. We have uh, this uh, I like to hand out mm -hmm. because it has the plan of salvation, mm -hmm. the scriptures on salvation. And it's been amazing. All over the country I've handed these out. And we've gotten response by people who have said they have prayed. And I go into a lot of nightclubs, taverns, and places of uh, worldly amusement and hand these out. And I get good reception there too. All right. And I just want you to get to know some of our phone operators, and uh, you might you can feel free to call in if you have a particular question, you have a need for prayer, or there's something that you would like to ask the doctors, you feel free to call in right now. And Denver's one of them over here on the phones, and we'll come back and talk to you in a little bit. And I want to see if any of our phone operators here have some questions they would like for us to go over and ask the doctors. Many of you are calling in with a variety of questions here, and what we do is we take these questions over and we just share them right with the doctors, because I invite all of you to feel free to call in if you have particular questions. So feel free to do that at this particular time because we're here to help you and involve you in this program. We have a number of questions. Herb Benadryl, what is it? Benadryl is an antihistamine. Um, 
It's frequently used by physicians to control or to treat allergic symptoms that are brought on by either exposure to uh, food allergens causing hives or other allergens that might cause similar symptoms or congestion and cough. I have another call that's come in here. Gornasal allergies uh, that cause sneezing, itching in the nose, running nose for 30 minutes. Here's a person that's called and they have this particular problem. They're not taking any form of medication. What would you recommend? I didn't hear the last part, as you said. Well, they have nasal, uh, nasal problems that's causing all kinds of sneezing and itching mm -hmm. in the nose, running nose for sometimes up to 30 minutes. They're not taking any kind of medication that they can be allergic to. Mm -hmm. What could be causing it? Right. Well, this is typically uh, a nasal allergy. Uh, we frequently call that hay fever. Uh, hay fever is expressed as um, a runny nose, uh, itchiness in the nose, a stuffy nose, um, runny, uh, sneezing, um, the uh, palate uh, may be itchy too. Um, we call it hay fever, although it really doesn't have anything to do with hay. Uh, hay fever mostly occurs, we associate this with uh, ragweed, but you can have hay fever all throughout the year. Um, and uh, this kind of a symptom, or these kinds of symptoms, uh, are due to an allergy specifically uh, to the lining in the nose. And uh, there's a lot of treatment for that, but the treatment has to start after finding out what causes the nasal allergy. Now, one can have a nasal allergy usually to what uh, one breathes in this would be the most common cause. Uh, one can have nasal allergy to something that you eat, although this is not very, very likely, especially after uh, childhood. Uh, so I think that uh, the proper approach there would be to see someone who specializes in allergies or is familiar with allergies to try to determine what the cause is. Then, uh, if it's something which uh, can be removed or eliminated from uh, your environment, that would be the first treatment. Uh, one could take drugs such as Benadryl, uh, and if it were something that you couldn't avoid, such as uh, tree pollens or uh, ragweed pollen or anything in the air, uh, then one might have to uh, 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 consider uh, injection therapy or what we call allergy shots. All right, our viewers have so many questions. I didn't know you could ask this many questions about allergies. They're fine, and, but they're all very, very important questions. I want to pass them on to y'all. Here's a lady whose son is receiving allergy shots for 15 years. Every time he gets a shot, the allergy gets worse. Why? Well, would you have him uh, to take the shot for the rest of his, uh, of his life? In other words, when he takes the shots, he gets worse. Why take the shots? Well, that's a good question. Um, Basically, uh, patients should not get worse after getting an allergy shot. Um, with allergy shots, um, it takes a while for the level uh, of protection to build up. Uh, and for that reason, we recommend that patients uh, who do go on allergy shots uh, stay on it for at least uh, two to three years. And then what we do is we stop the shots. And in that way, um, about two-thirds of people who are on allergy shots get as much protection at the end of that time as they're ever going to get. Now, not everybody gets protection, and the other people have to go back on the shots again. But then, uh, after three or five years, we would stop them. So if, if, um, if that uh, child has not received any relief after 15 years, I think you seriously have to consider that perhaps the allergy shots are not being given to the right substance uh, or there's some other problem going on. I, I certainly would not continue that for the rest of his life. Uh, doctor, I uh, wanted to ask you next. As, here's a young man, he's 15 years old and he's taking Intol. Correct. Uh, could you explain something about this medication? How does it work? Sure. Uh, Intol is the trade name for the drug similar to nasal chrome. Nasal chrome is a medication, as Dr. Bloomberg mentioned earlier, that's administered to the nose. Intol is the same medication that is administered to the lung by inhaling the medication. And it works in the same way that nasal chrome works in the nose. In other words, it binds or attaches to those cells that are responsible for the release of the chemicals in the body that cause the allergic symptoms and prevents the release of those cells. So just in the same way that nasal chrome is used for the treatment of hay fever, in a preventative fashion, Intol is used in a preventative fashion for treatment of asthma and it can be administered in a variety of ways 
uh, in a handheld form of nebulizer. There are two forms of that, one that just came out recently, uh, and then also in the form of a, a compressor uh, medication where it is aerosolized uh, to the child. And uh, I mentioned child because it's been particularly important in treatment of asthma uh, in children and has been very, very effective and very helpful. In fact, that brings up another question, Doctor. What is the youngest age a child can receive allergy shots? Well, that's an interesting question. Let me answer it a little differently. Mm -hmm. The first question is, what is the youngest age the child can develop allergies? And uh, frequently, people believe that, and uh, incorrectly so, that very young children do not develop allergies. But the fact is that we're frequently called to see children who have developed significant sensitivity to their formula um, oftentimes in the first weeks of life and in fact children may develop asthma certainly within the first year of life and oftentimes in the first several months of life. So the development of allergies and allergy related problems may occur very early in life. The question as to when a child should be considered for starting on allergy shots really depends upon the particular situation, the particular child and the sensitivities that that child has. Um, Oftentimes, the sensitivities that a very young child has are not those types that really benefit from allergy shots or hyposensitization. The uh, types of sensitivities that do benefit most from those allergies are sensitivities to pollens. Um, and those sensitivities rarely develop before two to three years of age, very rarely before two and, and rarely before three. So that oftentimes it becomes a moot point because the child is not going to have those types of sensitivities until they are um, between two and three years of age. So most allergists uh, do not start children on allergy shots before age three, although under certain circumstances there may be an individual child who may get started on shots uh, in the third year of life or perhaps even in the second year of life, but that's really an unusual situation. Doctor, let me ask you, are there any kind of medication, are there shots well, there are, aren't they? Shots that people can take for like poison ivy and things like that. This is um, a controversial uh, area. There are injections for poison ivy. Uh, the question is, is uh, are they effective? Uh, poison ivy is a different kind of allergy and uh, theoretically is not susceptible to giving uh, allergy injections in the usual sense. Uh, as far as I know, and maybe some of the other panelists uh, may want to respond to that, uh, the injections that are available for poison ivy now have not been proven to be effective. Okay. Now, we might have responded to this a little bit earlier. Um, uh, Howard, how can an adult get a sudden allergic reaction? Or can they? Or have they they've always been allergic to that thing. They've just come in contact with it for the first time. Uh, generally, um, it's not a matter of first exposure. Uh, generally, these um, people have been exposed to the substances before, but perhaps the dose uh, to which they've been exposed has never been sufficient in the past to produce any allergic reaction. Um, uh, in fact, uh, without a first exposure, um, theoretically, an allergy should not occur. Um, but at any time in life, a reaction uh, may become manifest. Uh, and, but we've talked about drugs in the past. Uh, we can also talk about insect stings. Uh, and this is interesting because uh, somebody can develop uh, a reaction uh, to an insect sting the first time. Uh, and that reaction may be life-threatening. Uh, exactly why that's so, um, because the, the patient may not recall having been stung before, uh, is an interesting one. Um, uh, other things that can occur late in life or at any time uh, are sudden exposure to animals. Uh, and somebody may go into a house, uh, for example, where there's been a cat and suddenly, suddenly start uh, sneezing or wheezing uh, and uh, they don't realize what's happening to them. And in fact, they are allergic to that animal. Uh, so at any time in life, allergies can just uh, appear. Okay. Now, you, our viewers, are doing a tremendous job on your questions. It's been very good questions, and you've been calling in during this particular program. You've been coming up with all kinds of questions, and I enjoy co-hosting these programs with you, our viewers, and because you're the ones with the questions. And so 
I encourage you to feel free to get up and go to the phones if you have further questions. And we're going to be going to a special selection in just a moment, but I also want to encourage you and remind you while we're over here at the phones that you can also call in if there's a particular problem that you might have or a particular need for prayer. And we're going to be going right now to another musical selection. And if you have a question, I encourage you right now to get up and go to those phones and call during this time. And we'll be right back with much more.